Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. I think it's about time we started addressing Tesla FUD. For those who don't know, FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's a tool used to gaslight and manipulate people uh, into taking certain actions. Usually it's political, but a lot of times it could be consumer goods you know, trying to get people to vote a certain way or buy a certain product. And that's essentially what FUD is. Now, I know a lot of my viewers are Tesla owners. And so when they hear Tesla FUD, they're thinking about the oil industry and they're thinking about fossil fuels and moneyed interests that are trying to block Tesla essentially from succeeding and essentially just invalidating Tesla EVs or invalidating Tesla as a company, sowing fear, uncertainty, and doubt to either drive people to divest from Tesla or to not buy a Tesla vehicle. So that's what Tesla owners think about when they hear Tesla FUD. However, if you're a non-Tesla EV owner, Tesla FUD means something completely different. It's the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt spread by Tesla owners and Tesla as a company about other EVs, about non-Tesla EVs. It's essentially lies and misrepresentations, falsehoods, fear, uncertainty, and doubt to drive people away from considering non-Tesla EVs and, you know, apparently to buying Tesla EVs. That seems to be the motive. And it takes a number of forms, right? And it's directed not at any specific electric vehicle, though a number of electric vehicles are recipients of that sort of derision, as is the public charging infrastructure. So you see it in things like uh, harping on the Bolt EV's seats or its charging rate or celebrating when Jaguar has to recall their I-PACES to fix a brake issue or celebrating when Audi has to recall their e-tron to reseal the battery to prevent battery fires or celebrating when Porsche has to restructure their manufacturing process because of issues that they hadn't foreseen with the take-on. These are all the, the types of behaviors that you see. Uh, again, misrepresentations of the charging infrastructure Electrify America, they have issues with some of their payment readers, right? Well, it gets sort of blown out of proportion. So anything possible to invalidate Electrify America's efforts or referring to it as a compliance charging network, as if that even has a meaning. Yes, the money to fund Electrify America came out of a judgment against VW, but that doesn't change Electrify America's mission, right, in terms of what they're doing with their charging networks and those uh, payment reader issues that we see they're blown out of proportion in the same way that we see the fire issues with older teslas yet in one case you'll see tesla owners push back and say it's unfair think about how many gas cars are burning every day or catching on fire every day well you know that's a different issue right we know that those old contraptions, those gas cans are eventually going to have to go away. But uh, that doesn't change the fact that Teslas are catching on fire. So it is an issue. It is a legitimate issue. It shouldn't be blown out of proportion, but it should be considered. Yet, you'll see those same people who are complaining about the Tesla fires being addressed, uh, blowing out of proportion some of the payment issues that Electrify America was seeing with those NIAX payment readers. So there's a lot of this, again, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that gets sown, whether purposefully or not, I don't know that it, any sort of direction is coming from Tesla corporate. I'm not caring about whether this is some sort of a conspiracy or not. In fact, I couldn't care less about that. I just know the behaviors that I see. And again, this is not all Tesla owners. A lot of Tesla owners are just pro EV, period. However, when you have EV media outlets that have a clear pro Tesla bias that are spreading misinformation, spreading 
FUD about non-Tesla EVs, well, you're getting that information to a lot of people who now have a received opinion that they're spreading as though it's fact. So even if some of these owners have good intentions and they think that they're spreading valid or true information, they're actually just parroting FUD. And I think that's something that's very concerning for electric vehicle adoption for the EV community. And we're seeing it now too, where the mainstream media is finally starting to cover electric vehicles. And we saw a recent hit piece that I'm probably going to do a lot more on later uh, from the New York Times. And in that article, it claimed that the Bolt EV would require five hours of charging in order to make it from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and back to Los Angeles again. Those of you who have followed my channel know that I've made that trip numerous times. I can tell you for sure that is not accurate. But rather than rallying together as an EV community, what we saw is people say, well, you should have used the Tesla because the Tesla is so much better than that crappy Bolt EV. That's not helpful. It's not accurate, right? So even you see Clean Technica, their retort was essentially a hit piece on non-Tesla EVs, trying to claim that the Kona Electric would take three and a half hours of charging to make that trip, or the Bolt EV and the Nero EV would take four hours of charging to make that trip. That's FUD, and it's inaccurate. I realize that they probably don't have a whole lot of experience with the Bolt EV or non-Tesla EVs, and they're relying on a better route planner, which is beyond conservative, and it also doesn't have the best data. But it's just inaccurate. So what they're doing is they're just feeding the fire. So New York Times put out a hit piece on electric vehicles, and their retort was, no, it's not going to take five hours of charging you know, for eight hours of driving to go to LA and Vegas and back, it's only going to take four or three and a half, unless you buy a Tesla, then it will only take an hour. And I think that's the type of stuff that we don't need, because whether you like it or not, you are actually feeding into the FUD that the mainstream media is going to spread about all EVs. They don't care, and most Americans aren't going to make the distinction. One of the factoids that catches the people I talk to about EVs by surprise the most is that no one else gets to use the Tesla charging infrastructure. They just thought all electric vehicles use the same charger. They had no idea, right? So to them, it doesn't matter. There is no distinction between a Tesla and other EVs. So you're actually hurting yourself you're actually hurting your own cause. So when you besmirch and you denigrate other EVs just for the sake of propping up Teslas, what you don't realize is for a majority of people, there is no distinction between the two. So you're breaking down Tesla the same way you're breaking down all of these other non-Tesla EVs. And realistically, the Bolt EV is probably the best example to use for driving from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and back in an EV. Because while it isn't as fast as the far more expensive Teslas, it is much faster than any of the short range electric vehicles. And it's on par with most of the average priced electric vehicles, the Nero EV, the Kona Electric, the New Leaf E+. They're all in the same ballpark. Even the Tesla Model 3 SR is a similar amount of time to make the trip from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and back again. And so really the Bolt EV does actually make a very good baseline, but it needs to be approached accurately. And no, it does not take five hours of charging to make the trip. It doesn't take four hours of charging to make the trip. I make the trip regularly. The Bolt EV maybe in normal circumstances takes about an hour and a half of charging. Why are we just feeding more misinformation on top of the misinformation that's already being highly publicized by the New York Times. It doesn't make any sense. So that's the Tesla FUD that I'm referring to. That's the stuff that we need to get past. If we can acknowledge the fact that all of us as EV advocates are in this together, 
we're going to have a much better ability to fight the FUD that's actually going to come from the mainstream media and the media outlets that actually are bought by fossil fuels and special interests. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And thank you for watching. We all use the same chargers.